talk a lot about like what God's intention was in putting his image in the garden. Yes. And how he puts him in it, take dominion, yes. cultivate it, and the effects of the fall. It was a desert for, before it was a garden. Okay. Because it says that uh, no water had let, yet fallen on the land. Read it. Yeah. Two. So, Genesis 2, 5, when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. It's a desert. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. And the mist was coming, going up from the land, and was watering the whole face of the ground. Okay. So now a garden's coming up. Okay. So it was a desert, there was no bushes, no water, and then all of a sudden, God allows a mist to come on the land. All of a sudden, God allows a mist to come on the land, and from that land, he creates Eden. Okay. So from a desert, he creates a garden. And then what happens? Man sins. Right. And he turns it back into a desert. Okay. <laughs> so he, well, God's purpose in putting Adam in the garden, what, what is he supposed to do? It's, he, it's God's yeah. image yes. in the garden. And he's yes. told to do what? Work it and keep it. Okay. Dress it and keep it, okay. as the KJV says. So his, essentially, he's to cultivate God's cultivation. Okay. So uh, Richard Gaffin says that the garden was very good, but it was not very best. Okay. So Adam was there really just to make things better. And uh, you know, because I mean, there, there's levels of good. We're not saying that, you know, it was like a terrible place to live or anything like that. So God created everything, he called it good. And then when he created man, he called it very good. And he places Adam and Eve in the garden, and then there's, he says, now make it better, essentially, okay. right? So, and by doing that is, you know, one, uh, Adam gets a wife, right? Adam is called to name, first, first thing Adam is called to do is to name the animals. That's a creative process, right? right? So he can name them whatever he wants, and God says that will be the name. So he has authority, mm -hmm. right? So he has creative authority, creative control, um, and he can he can do as he wants as an artist and the cool thing is that in the garden were rivers and from the rivers flew onyx delium and gold and and those are not useful minerals for making hoes and axes to grow well, we see God already caused the plants to grow and stuff right so they're not useful in terms of making hoes and axes and pickaxes and stuff they're used for beauty Right. right, so they're uh, like gold is used to adorn things. So, so God comes in the dawn, and He's looking at the work Adam has done, and just imagine like there's a wooden bench adorned with gold in the midst of the section of the garden where God and Adam can just sit and look back on God's creation and talk with God. Right. So this is what it, it's almost like a museum. Eden is this museum of God's beauty and God's work, the animals, the bushes, the trees, the fruit. All this stuff and God and Adam's role is to work it and to keep it and to beautify it. So he's essentially the curator of God's museum. Okay. Yes. And so the fall enters. Yes. And Adam brings death. Death enters the garden. Yes. God, he's, he's God's image. Yeah. Before that, he's told in the garden to uh, be fruitful and multiply, subdue and fill the earth. Okay. Right? Right. And then after sin, there's pain in childbearing and there's a pain in the toil of the ground. Right. So it's still be fruitful and multiply with pain and childbearing and, and subdue and fill the earth with pain and toil. Yeah. So that mandate is still there. It's, and, and then you see it right afterwards when it's going through the line of Cain and you see they've made bronze, they've made iron, they've made music, they've made pipe. So, so they're still taking the ground, they're still working it, they're still keeping it, they're still cultivating it. Right. So there's not a disconnect between uh, the Garden of Eden and today. It's right. the same, it's just harder. So um, non-Christian views of, of the world and spirituality that even sometimes impact Christians' thinking is is that because of the fall, like this is all this is all bad now. It's yeah, Christoplatonism. This, yeah, this this is this is bad. Heaven is good, and 100%. Let's buy the T-shirt and get the bumper sticker. Right. Heaven is great. Absolutely. Okay, but the idea is is that this is all sort of like icky. This is this is ugly, icky stuff. Yes. And we we want to get to the better spiritual stuff later and sort of escape this ugliness right and so heaven is great because that's where God dwells yeah <laughs> we were never created to be in heaven 
we were created to be on earth. That's where we were in the, in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So we say, well, we're going to die and go to heaven, probably for a short time until the consummation. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a, a time mm -hmm. when people are risen from the dead. They're judged to heaven. They go into eternity mm -hmm. with God or eternity without God. Yeah. And then there's the new creation, the consummated earth, mm -hmm. the, the, the end of all things. And we're still going to be where God intended us to be. And God's going to walk with us and God's going to visit us. Yeah. And so, so, so in the beginning of creation, God creates his image and heaven and earth are met. Yes. And so when the fall enters, God doesn't abandon creation, but now there's a disconnect between yes. God and his people, right. God and his creation, because we're rebels, we're at war with him. But the beauty of the gospel is that God comes as king to bring redemption to the ends of the earth and forgiveness, salvation, as far as the curse is found. And the kingdom of heaven is God now kissing earth again. Right. God and earth, heaven and earth coming That's back right. together again. And so Jesus inaugurates that mm -hmm. and it's happened. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so what Jesus does is he brings in that, that redemption, that healing of, of, of all that broken relationship of us with God and our sin and also the very goodness of creation. Yes. God, God is amplifying now. Right. And Jesus comes to save sinners from their sin, to reconcile the world to himself. But the first thing that the second Adam does, our representative, when he conquers death in a garden, which is where it was brought, the first thing he does is begin to work the ground. He's, he's, he's mistaken as a gardener. Right. God tells Adam, take dominion. Right. To make this beautiful. Right. And, and, and so we can see, I mean, <laughs> we're sitting here in a desert, right? And yet we're in Phoenix where they just had the Super Bowl and hundreds of thousands of people flocked to the desert yeah. where there was, they didn't worry about bringing enough water. They didn't bring it, worry about bringing enough food. They didn't worry about dehydration. They had running water, toilets that worked in the desert. Flush. In the desert. This, this, the, yeah. here. This is where it happened. Yes, right yeah. here. Like this is only, I mean, you could turn your cameras and see, you know, stuff, you know, houses and electricity and telephone poles and stuff just right around the corner, you yeah. know? So <laughs> we're here in the desert where God has essentially, we, we have, because of the gospel, we've uh, created a city and a garden. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's essentially what we've done. Mm -hmm. Now there are cultures still on the face of the planet that don't have uh, gardens and deserts. There's mm -hmm. Africa, Sahara, all these things. Pagan nations. Yeah, now you have to ask, how come we did it? What's so different about Al Africa's geological location than this place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a good point. Right. Like, so the effects of the Christian, of the gospel, people being reconciled to God is the Christian worldview begins to penetrate every aspect of their, their lives, their right. families, and then their culture. Right. We've cultivated roads and transportation systems. Right. Right. So a hundred years from now, I mean a hundred years ago, if you were to ask people, how do I get to uh, New York? to LA uh -huh. they would draw the rivers yeah right but now if you ask them how to get to New York to LA they would draw you a map of the interstates and they don't even know where the rivers are or point you to the airport or point you to the airport right yeah so so we have cultivated God's land and create man has created a culture yeah as a result of that and that's happened here in America clearly because of a Christian worldview because of capitalism and science and economics modern and science, science given pop by mm -hmm. the Christian worldview yeah and so all of those effects are blessings as a result of biblical worldview man has reconciled reconciled with God through Christ and Christ alone and his work alone and then the effects of that reconciliation with God penetrate every area of the world and so yes Jesus is, is according to Paul Christian eschatology 101 1 Corinthians 15 mm -hmm. um, he's reigning now yes and he must reign until he's put all his enemies under his feet now that's gospel centered right. but everything is being put into subjection to him yeah. a nation who abandons God law there's famine and a nation who embraces God's law there's there's blessing and food is abundant and there's milk and honey and yes and all that stuff yes and so that that's the importance of embracing God's law because it actually affects you in time and space that's right it blesses society right right so when justice is is done when righteousness is heralded, right? Right. What's that? That quote on on Facebook that Crawford said. He said, or he said at his talk, he said, he said, if God promises 
to bring long-term prosperity to those who obey God's law. Why do we believe that evil will triumph? Yeah. You know, like right. why will they triumph over those who obey God's laws? He promised, that's what he said in the scripture. I, I've, I, I say all the time that our culture sees the great blessing in, in, in escape. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus says in John 17, Father, I did not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Mm-hmm. And we pray in the reverse prayers. As soon as right. things get bad around us, the first thing we're saying as Christians today Rapture is, me. Father, take us out of the world, <laughs> right? right? Take us out of the world and, and leave them to the evil one, right? the, the unbelievers. And Jesus says, the meek shall inherit the earth. He takes what was the theme in Psalm 37 where, where, where it's the wicked who were uprooted from the land and the, the righteous who were left to dwell in it. And he actually expands on it now. And he says, the meek shall inherit not just the land, but the, the earth. Right. Paul says in Romans 4 that the, the Abraham's descendants would inherit the world. Mm-hmm. Whereas before they're thinking the land and, and Paul's like the world. Right. So, so like the, the real biblical foundation of all of our thinking of the world should be this, this belongs to God and his people, mm-hmm. right? right? And Christ's gospel redeems sinners and this world's going to be filled with descendants of Abraham as, as numerous as the stars, mm-hmm. right? And so that gets me to another, another point, something that you emphasize all the time, is that Jesus has authority in every area, including beautification, including yes. arts. Yes. Okay, so talk about that. Very much so. <laughs> like it was Adam's first job, right? Right. There was gold, delium, and onyx that was flowing into the river to beautify the garden. Yeah. Gold, we know what gold is for. So it could be used as a currency, of course, but it's also used to beautify stuff, beautify uh, other things. Delium is used for incense and for sweet aromas and anointing oils. And then onyx is, of course, used for beauty. Yeah. So then you get to the temple in Exodus where God commands all these artists to bring their gifts and their talents. By the way, uh, their gifts and their talents were learned in Egypt for 400 years. Mm. So they, it, the pagans can teach Christians how to do art. So we can learn from each other and, 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 and apply our worldview on a pagans, what pagans have done. So anyway. Flip it, make it better. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so, an ex- so here they are, they're in Exodus. You have this golden calf that they build to worship with out of gold and onyx and delium and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Moses see it, uh, they, de- they destroy that gold and delium and onyx and then they use those minerals in the very next chapter to build the temple. So the place where God dwells is adorned with gold, delium, and onyx in the Garden of Eden. In the temple, it has gold, delium, and onyx. It's the very first thing God commanded to go in the temple. Uh, gold, incense, and onyx. And then, uh, in Revelation 21, when you see the New Jerusalem descending, it's, it's, it's described as having gold, delium, and onyx. So these are all resor- artistic resources. So if you're an artist, God wants you to beautify the earth and to make it beautiful and to, and to create amazing things. Mm-hmm. And you can do that uh, by looking at scripture to Bezalel. He was gifted uh, with skill, with intelligence, with the Holy Spirit, and, uh, and with the ability to teach. Right. And so those are, are the attributes of an artist. Skill, they have to be good at something. Uh, not, not, not prideful, but they can boast about the skill God has given them, mm-hmm. right? So if we're in a contractual negotiation, let's say I want to redo your kitchen, right? right, Or interior design your house. And you ask me, am I good? And my response is, well, you know, I don't want to brag. You know, some people think I'm okay, you know, and, you know, <laughs> right? Like, right. you know, I would say, no, yeah, these right. are the clients I've done. This is the work I've done. Look how yeah. it is. And you're going to pay a lot of money for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, that's not pride. Because pride is ascribing to yourself attributes that are not true. Right. Right? So if God has given you gifts, if God has given you talents, if God has made it so you're a doctor where hardly anybody dies in your care, maybe in your, then that's something you want to talk about, you know? And you right. want to give glory to God for those gifts, but not hide them and act like those gifts are not part of your what God has created you out of the dirt to be. Yeah. So skill and then intelligence. Okay. We need to be smart with our arts. We need to be intelligent. We need to be uh, cutting. There's a reason why people like John Stewart and Stephen Colbert are as popular as they are. It's because they're intelligent, right? Even right. though they're against our worldview, they can still make us laugh, and they can even cause us to think about our own 
worldviews. As a result, it's intelligent comedy. Yeah. Okay. And then you have, um, so we need Christians that are not uh, rushing out to see the latest James Franco movie or Vince Vaughn movie, but they're looking to create really intelligent satires and comedic commentaries on the world. Right. That's smart. Um, and so skill, intelligence, and, and then of course you have the Holy Spirit. All this is done according to a worldview because worldview matters. Uh, your worldview is what dictates the kind of art that you make. Right. Right. So if you have a pagan worldview, you're going to make art that has poor theology in what it stands for. Pagans make uh, uh, great art with poor theology and Christians make poor art with Great, great theology, mm -hmm. right? So we've conflicted that and haven't tried to do. And that it both. wasn't always that way. No, the history of the Christian Church. We we were the, the culture makers. Right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, in the Renaissance, the church was buying the art. It was humanist art because mm -hmm. the church was humanist. Mm -hmm. But they were still making great art. They were buying great art, and then you have the Reformation art, which you have Rembrandt. Uh, who made these fantastic paintings that he got down to the detail of the reflection of the the eye duck, the, the tear duck. Yes. You can see in the paintings and yes. stuff. And so that's just a, a level of art that we just don't see anymore. We throw splatter paint up against the wall and we're like, yay. Yeah, yeah. You know, or, yeah. or, or pornography. Right. right? So Which is the, the art of our culture. Right. So, yeah. so, so art is essentially labor for someone's rest. Right, so not not necessarily in a Sabbath rest, mm -hmm. but like if we're watching a movie or we're just enjoying, you know, a night at dinner, our food, right? So it's all this, this it's it's someone else's labor for another person's rest, and so you see that it's in the temple, it's labor for Sabbath rest, and then you get um, uh, to our culture today, where it's literally someone's labor for someone else's destruction. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what pornography is. It's labor for destruction. That's, uh, and uh, you know, all these arts that are against God or against the worldview. Yeah. And so, like, that's the difference. So it's it's literally labor for labor, <laughs> mm. right? Essentially. Wow. So that's how, that's how our our world views art. So, so we think about some foundational things. Christ has risen from the dead. The second Adam. He's conquered our sin, he's washed it away, mm -hmm. he's redeeming sinners, he's bringing a salvation to the ends of the earth, and nations are going to flow up to the mountain of God, and, and um, he has dominion, mm -hmm. glory, and a kingdom that will never be destroyed, mm -hmm. and, and he is actively right now putting things in subjection to himself. First, he saves sinners, mm -hmm. but we're supposed to care yes. about here and now. Right. Because he has authority in heaven and on earth. This is his. It doesn't belong to the devil. Right. And so Christians have sort of like handed off the culture, the world around yeah. them, to the unbelievers, because here's the thing, we want to go home. Right. And But the truth is, is Jesus owns all this. Right. And so it, it's, it's more than he owns it, right? Right. It's easy to say he owns it. This is a gift to him from the Father. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. It's a gift to him from the Father, which he will in turn give back to the Father. Yes. Right. So when we sit there and say, it's going to hell in a handbasket, just, you know, prepare the way, you know, for destruction. Right. Like, could you imagine, like, Jesus, it, he's Here. like, well, this is this is what God gave me as a gift. Yes. You know, and your attitude is to just let it go to hell? Yeah. You no. Know, like, right. that's got to be offensive to God, yeah. who's sitting at the right hand, ruling and reigning with power, and he's making enemies his feet. It's impossible to look at what Adam has done in the garden, uh, and then to look at just how the dominion mandate, the cultural mandate expands through, you know, the Great Commission. Right. Where it says, uh, go make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them uh, all things I've commanded, you know, still be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. It's mm. just reworded differently. Mm. And it's with an emphasis of the gospel, which I don't think any of us reject the gospel importance in being in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. So the foundation to all of what we're talking about is, is the good news of what God has done in Christ to save sinners. The and like, time. we're supposed to bring that, that message of his authority, yes. his lordship and his redemption to every single nook and cranny. People go, like to my neighbor, we go, yes and amen. Like to my dad who's not a believer, yes and amen. Right. Like to my school, yes and amen. To, to the local government, yes and amen. To the arts and media, mm -hmm. 
yes and amen. And science, yes and amen. Like everywhere we put, say, look, we need to bring the gospel to this area and the authority of Christ to this area and do it better, make it beautiful, turn this wilderness right. into a garden. Right. But he's already done it. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and so it's not, it's not, you look at Noah. Yeah. Noah's the, the last remaining family on the earth. As soon as he gets off the ark, he builds an altar and he, and he sacrifices a, an animal for God. God smells the aroma. It's pleasing to him because of what Jesus does. He, he, he says to Noah, I will never again curse the ground as a result of man. That was 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, right? right? So that was way back then. Right. <laughs> and here we are in a desert kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, so the blessings of God saving us mm -hmm. do not just stand isolated within us and our own individual relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. but we're saved. And Jesus doesn't save us just for heaven one day, but he saves the whole person. Yes. Right? Right. And, and, and in saving the whole person, that redemption just spills out mm -hmm. and starts to bring fruit. Right. Right? And so the, the message is, is to bring the good news to the world of salvation in Christ, but also his authority over every area. Mm -hmm. And to allow what we believe about Christ and, and, and God and his world to actually affect everything. Right. To, to look at something that's, that's ugly and say, that needs to come under the feet of Jesus. Yes. And it needs to glorify him. Yes. In, every, in every area of art, in, 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 in your particular expertise like media and and film and all those things like Jesus yeah. has to have ownership of God uses things uh, to accomplish his will yeah God uses means to save right yes. preaching the gospel is something man does yes so so that even even the Bible says uh, if you spank your child you'll save him from Sheol right mm -hmm. so so there's an element to God using means as a way in a sense in, in a sense uh, fertilizer in which whenever he decides to regenerate based on completely his own will these things in which we've done softens the soil and allows God to regenerate it. So the big the big picture we should have as Christians is that Jesus is king and that's a meaningful statement. Mm -hmm. It's not just a punchline at a party. Mm -hmm. He's king. Yes. And that and that his his authority, his kingship is over every area. And so we ought not to see an area of the world art, science, media, whatever, as, well, we can't touch that. We right. can't beautify it for Jesus. Right. We can't make it better. Right. Wh whatever your hand finds to do, <laughs> you know, do with all your might. Right. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do to the glory of right. God. We should be actually bringing the authority of Christ and His beauty into every single area of life because we're saved. Because He saved us by His grace. Yes. We're redeemed in Jesus yes. and we're reconciled right. to God. However, James says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you say, to, one of you says to them, "Go in peace, be warmed and filled," without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Mm -hmm. So there's an element here. And we read Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you are saved through faith, not of works, so no man can boast. However, you are saved to do... Let's unto that, good works. Let's, yeah. we're, for we're, we're, we're His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Unto good works. Before the foundations of the world. Right. Right? So, so essentially, God, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit covenanted before the foundations of the world to to do this thing here in time and space right. and that was the agreement and, and 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 that's what they've done and and so there there's there's an these works that we do now as a result of our christian were were prepared beforehand the reason we were saved was to do these works yes right and so james is saying hey if you just preach the gospel to them and they go away hungry you're you're not you're not helping. Go be or, warm, be filled. Right. It's good to or, go and slam right, the door. Right, but it works the other way too, right? So yeah. if you just tell them, uh, hey, here's food and stuff, and you, there's no gospel, that, that doesn't accomplish anything. Nothing. Either. Right. Yeah, just it's, a, it's just a momentary right. fix. So they're harmonious yes. in, 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 in the advance of the gospel. And, and if you go to the garden and back to the garden, God made fruit 
and the trees and he said uh, they're beautiful and they're good for food so they're be beautiful for the eye and they're good for food so they were beautiful for beauty's sake and they were practical right mm -hmm. so there's an element of of uh, beauty and practicality there mm -hmm. and then we see Jesus who is the tree of life in the end in the, when in the New Jerusalem the tree of life is Jesus Jesus is also beautiful and he's practical in time and space what he he actually lived in time and space so the gospel is beautiful and practical it has mm. it, it does stuff in time and in space so someone it, says I don't know Marcus that God is concerned with here and now like he, he may not really be concerned with all, all this the real punch is how how concerned is God with his people and his world he entered in it he, yes he, can. he, he took on right. flesh and, and he's a part of it right right and and so is he is he concerned with redemption well he he, he tabernacled among us mm -hmm. to save us right. touched us ate with us hung out with us right and and so he cares <laughs> right. about what's going on there's no di there's no split where God goes right. well send enters so I I could care less, let it right. rot, let right. it be destroyed. Even more so, the temple, the veil was ripped open and yeah. now God doesn't dwell in temples, He dwells among us yeah. as believers. Yeah. So essentially He's here all over the earth as the gospel goes forth now. Yeah. So where's the gold, delium, and onyx, mm. right? right. That, that's what we're to do, we're to yeah. beautify the new world. And Jesus says, behold, I'm making all things new. Right. Not I'm making all new things. I'm right. making all things new. Yes. Right? Right, that's right. There you go. All right.